Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is Gurpreet from Dataverse Canvas and in today's tutorial we are going to learn about groups in Tableau. We will start with an introduction where we will talk about what are groups, how they are used and what are the use cases of groups. First thing that comes to my mind when I hear about group is group of people that are gathered together or located together or the things that are classified together as a group. So what is a group? As per Tableau's definition, you can create a group to combine related members in a single field. For example, if we are talking about a sales data set where we have sales of different categories and subcategories, for example, sales of pencils, erasers, paperclip, then all of these items can be grouped together to create a stationary category where we will be showing the sales of all these pencils, eraser and paper clips clubbed together into one category. Groups are always static or you can say fixed as we have to always update them manually. They are used to combine different values under single label for both dimensions and measures. And if you look at the icon of group on Tableau, it is a paper clip. As you know, paper clip is used for putting papers together same way groups are used to combine related members together. So let's see how we can create groups in Tableau in different ways. So first of all, let's connect the sample superflow data set, which I have already connected it here. And now let's bring subcategories into row shelf and let's bring sales value. And now let's change the chart to a bar chart. And I will sort it by clicking on this icon in the descending order. And you will see all the sales by subcategories are shown here. And if we want to bring the labels, we will click on the label mark and click show mark labels. And you will see the sales value of all these subcategories are displayed in the descending order. So the first way to create a group is by selecting the labels. So in this case, I will select paper and then press control key or command queen Mac and select individual labels for these subcategories and when you select all these you hover over to these labels and you will see a tooltip appears and on here you will see this paperclip icon this is the icon for the group so if we select this then it will all be grouped together into one category so while i do that just keep a look on the row shelf and on the side pane what will happen to the subcategory and how the groups will be created. So let me go and click on this value and you will see all those categories are clubbed into one category, art, envelope and paper. And you will see here the euro shelf, the dimension is changed from subcategory to subcategory group. And the same subcategory group is created here. So what happened here is all these values are grouped together. So if we bring subcategory into row shelf again and you will see how they are grouped together so art is the subcategory which is in here paper and this one so actually i move it this side and you will see it here so this is the group which we created which comprises of art envelope paper and supplies so we can actually go here and right click on this new subcategory group and change the alias for that. So let's say we want it stationary. We should always give a meaningful name which will help us to categorize and organize this data set. So you will see the stationary is the new group which we created and the subcategory is the old subcategories which comprise of all these four groups. And if we want to add more or create a new group we can repeat the same steps. So for example in this case I will select binders, books and chairs or just do binders and bookcase and I will do this and go to group icon and click on that and it have created a subcategory group in this case another group so I will remove this and bring subcategory again in here and you will see there are two groups created right so because I created it on the another group so I don't want it this way so what I can do, I will first of all remove both these groups 
and I will delete them. And yes, I want to continue. So I have all these subcategories and I will again sort it in the descending order. I can either go into the subcategory, right click it, go to create and create a group. So here I can combine art, finder, bookcase, chairs into one group. And let's say just give it the stationary name even though chair is not part of that. So I can ungroup from there. I don't want it. And other one I can say furnishing and chairs into another group. And I will say furniture. So that way I have created two separate groups. And if I feel like I don't want art in the stationary group, I will click there and say ungroup. So that way I have created two groups. And I will simply bring these two groups in the row shelf and you can see furniture comprised of these two and stationery comprised of these two groups. So that's one way of creating groups. The other way of creating groups, I will remove this again, is by selecting all these categories, basically the marks, selecting all these marks and hover over to these ones and you will see the tooltip appears and you select this one. But when we select the marks, in comparison to when we selected the labels in the previous example, just again look at the row shelf and the color marks and the side sidebar. So let me do it again. So keep a close eye on these things. And when we click on group, you will see subcategory new group is in the color shelf, in the color mark, whereas the subcategory in the row shelf didn't change with, didn't replace it with the subcategory group. But eventually what happened is, still the groups are created, but because we selected the marks, so the group is created on the color mark. So it have colored all the group which we have created, all the categories which are in the group as a one color and everything else is into the other color. But if you bring this subcategory group one and bring it here and you will see, this is the one group which we created, which is one color and everything is in the other bucket. So it did the same thing, but because we selected the marks, it highlighted the marks color into one category and rest of them in the other categories. So that's another way of creating groups. Let's let's try to create another way of creating the group. So uh, let's let's say let me go to the new sheet and let me bring all the products into Rosha. So you will see these are all the products which we have in the Simple Superficial data set. So I will right click on the product name. And I will go to create and create a group. So here from this list, I want to, let's say, pick up all the products which have paper in it. So I will go to this find button. I will click on that and it will say find all the members. So I will type in paper in here and I will say find all. It will give me all the products which have paper in it. And I will group it, group them all together. And you will see here, this group is created with all the paper values in here, right? And let me find another one. I want to say, find something with pencils. And I will find all of these groups and I will group it all them together. And you will see another pencil group is created. So I will create, okay. So product name group is created. I will bring it here and you will see, this is the pencil group which I created. And this is the another group which I created for paper clips. So that way we can organize all of our products and the data and the dimensions into multiple groups and we can see either the sales or profit or other measure values based on the, those grouping criteria. So there are multiple use cases of, uh, of groups as well. So one of the main, uh, main use case for group is for correcting the data errors. For example, there are some states or some values in a dimension which are not labeled correctly or not named correctly. For example, if we have California spelled as CA and there are some other values as California, the combined full name. So we can club those values together and give a meaningful name as California and the full name. So that's, that's useful for correcting the data errors. And also, as I mentioned here in this product name example, it is really useful for organizing the data 
the way we want to use it and clubbing it all together into groups. So that way it will be really helpful for cleaning up that data and using it in the right way and displaying it in a meaningful way or also in the form of hierarchies. I hope you guys enjoyed this session and if you have any questions please feel free to drop a comment below and look forward to you guys in the next session.